tell me, Janet, what precisely have you prepared for our dinner? Hello, and welcome back to Fanny Craddock Cooks for Quarantine, Episode 2. New York needs some love tonight. So we're inviting a guest cook who was born in Brooklyn, though now she spends most of her time in Long Island. And as I understand it, she's become quite famous this week for drinking a very large cosmopolitan. What an accomplishment. Stay safe, have a very good time, and don't forget the cocktails. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious. Apparently, she's so nostalgic for New York in the 90s that she's drinking a cosmopolitan big enough for Carrie, Miranda, Charlotte, and Samantha to share. Maybe that explains why she walks around the kitchen barefoot and fancies herself a countess, or, or should I say, contessa. It's that time of year when there's a little snap in the air, and I love to make a really cozy dinner by the fire. So I thought I'd make Edwina a roast loin of pork with roasted vegetables. Splendid woman. A bit overdone, but that's all right. Oh, it's you again. All right, then, go on. Show me how to make a good dinner every night. My dear Janet, nothing could be simpler. All you need is a little knowledge, the right equipment. Come on, I'll show you now. Now, last week we learned about the national bird, the turkey. And today we turn our attention to... The pig. And during a quarantine, who doesn't like a good rub? Got some salt, and some garlic, and Ina calls for some thyme. Fresh thyme. But the grocery store today did not call for any thyme. The grocery store called for rosemary because everything else was gone. So that's what we're having. We're having rosemary with the pork. Too bad, Ina. And then a Put a cup of Dijon mustard. Ah. I went to our neighborhood butcher today. We'll pack this up so lovely. Got a really beautiful loin of pork from the butcher. Oh, I, I hate it when I miss a spot, and it's only because I'm being snapped at by someone that you can't see off camera who's saying, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, the network. Sure, Laveau, and sometimes you write me cross letters about me. It's only because somebody's waggling their hands which you can't see, saying, get over there and do the rest of it. Makes me ever so cross. I get very co cross letters from you as well. Oh, you missed a spot on that roast. Yes, I see, I will hurry up, thank you very much. <coughs> see how nicely Sarah arranged that on the cutting board? Lovely to look at, but of course it makes it impossible to do anything with it when everything is in the way. <laughs> Let's start with the carrots, shall we? Oh, there'll be viewer mail about this for sure. <clears throat> parsnips, parsnips. Oh, Fanny, you've gone and wasted more. Hmm. Hmm. I'm oh. going to be composting those little bits and bits and bobs at the end. Well, normally we do compost, but in the age of the coronavirus, all the composting is cancelled. ask, can I save time by not cutting out the core of the parsnip? The answer is yes, you can save time by doing that. Is that advisable? No. I love to use these Yukon gold potatoes. Yukon gold potatoes? No. New York fingerling potatoes. Spanish onions. Not from Spain, but Spanish onions from New York. I actually use those big Spanish onions. They're so much easier to, to slice and dice. There's a bit on there still. Oh, there's a bit on there still, Sarah, is there? There's a bit on there still. Well, thank you very much, Sarah. That maybe should have been taken care of before the taping of the show. 
There's a bit on there still. There's a bit on this. <laughs> Sarah decides not to come to work today because she says she's not an essential worker. Well. Oh, is that bit still on? Fennel. Sometimes it has a really big top on it. Sometimes it has big tops on it. And remarkably few viewers writing into the show today. It must be a very <laughs> quiet night in New York. Doesn't anyone have anything to do? Seems like a lot of people are doing Grubhub tonight, uh, Fanny. What is Grubhub? <laughs> seamless. What is seamless? Sounds most disagreeable. Now we're going to pour melted butter and some olive oil over the vegetables. And then clean hands, just toss them all together. Now I'm going to wash my hands before I turn my attention to grinder. The grinder. Pepper grinder. Pepper grinder. The grinder. Into the oven. 30 minutes. Gas mark six. 425 degrees. Where's our dinner? Where's our dinner? Now we're going to take the pork's temperature. It should be 138 degrees. The thermometer appears not to be working. The pork is definitely not 80 degrees, I can assure you of that, nor is it 78 to 76. It's getting cooler by the second. <laughs> Live TV, thermometer's broken. 68 <laughs> degrees now. Need to go in a bit more? Any second now and the pork will freeze on its own, spontaneously. Oh, I've got full hands. Take that away from me, would you? No, not that. Sorry about that noise. That's it. And a filthy hand. Would you take that from me, darling? Thank you very much. Now you bang that down. No, no, no. Bang that. Sorry for that noise. Bang that down with your knuckles. If you love New York as much as we do, consider donating to City Harvest or to another charity of your choosing so that the neediest in our community don't go hungry during these really tough times. And to our friends and family and chosen family who are doctors and nurses and first responders and people working on the front line, we love you. Stay safe and we'll stay home.